Welcome back to A Critical Moment, a documentary about how Germany and the United States teach about the atrocities in their past. From WFPL News, I'm Stephanie Wolf, And I'm Jess Clark. Let's talk about something you've probably heard a lot about recently, an ideology conservatives say is sweeping the nation. Critical race theory. Critical race theory. Schools are now radicalizing our kids. I mean, what you're watching is the death of our future as a country. Critical race theory. It's an academic framework that emerged in the late 1970s in law schools. But lately, conservatives are using critical race theory, or CRT, as a stand-in term for anti-racist efforts in workplaces and schools. This controversy exploded at school board meetings throughout 2021, and it was the topic of a forum Jess went to in Louisville's East End. On an evening in July, Louisville Tea Party President Teresa Camoriano greets me in the lobby of the Louisville Marriott East. Be nice to us. <laughs> Camoriano's group is hosting a forum tonight, supposedly on critical race theory. The Tea Party organized the event along with a very new conservative group, No Left Turn Kentucky. It's a state chapter of a national group that sprung up in 2020 to oppose anti-racist efforts in public schools. They also oppose curriculum that includes LGBTQ perspectives. We walk past the swanky hotel bar to the event room. Beanie Gohagen leads the Kentucky chapter of the group. I just want to thank you all for coming this evening. It is encouraging to see so many people gathered here together who are concerned about our children, their education, their future, and truly the future of our country. Gohagen is speaking in front of about 100 people. There aren't enough chairs. Some people are leaning against the back wall. Stacks of handouts on a table invite people to join a right-wing group on the messaging app Telegram. There's an advertisement for a class on something called biblical citizenship and a guide on how to file complaints about school curriculum. The audience at this forum looks mostly white. There's only a handful of people of color, and two of them are the featured speakers. Delvin Azofaifa is a social studies teacher in Lexington. He's black, and he's an outspoken critic of critical race theory, or at least his interpretation of it. It would suggest that the United States of America today is systemically racist. So let me ask you all this in this fine crowd. It doesn't make sense to me if the United States is systemically racist, but all these white people came here to see two black people. <laughs> Ideas like the ones being shared at this forum may seem extreme, but they're making their way into everyday conservative media and politics. Republican Glenn Youngkin won the governor's race in Virginia, campaigning against so-called critical race theory in schools. Azo Fifa also has political aspirations. He ran unsuccessfully for Frankfurt City Commissioner in 2018. Critical race theory and critical race theory adjacent dogma tells students how to think. It tells white kids how to think about being oppressors over slaves they never owned. It teaches black people to be victims over circumstances they were never harmed by. While Azo Fifa is being presented here as an expert on critical race theory, he's not. The talking points he's using are the same talking points making their rounds across the country. Talking points that have their origin with conservative activist and writer Christopher Rufo. Conservatives need to wake up that this is an existential threat to the United States and the bureaucracy, even under the Trump administration, is now being weaponized against core traditional American values. That's Rufo on Fox News in September of 2020. And in this interview, Rufo redefined critical race theory for a new audience under very different terms than its scholars understand it. He claimed all these anti-racist and implicit bias trainings, these were all part of a theoretical legal framework that developed in the 1970s called critical race theory, or CRT. And CRT wanted the end of America, according to Rufo. From this interview, the moral panic spread like wildfire to then-President Donald Trump. In September, the Trump administration ordered federal agencies to stop offering employees certain diversity training on racial and gender biases. To state legislatures, to school boards. 
That's where parents and conservative activists have accused educators across the country, including in Jefferson County Public Schools in Louisville, of using anti-racist initiatives to divide and indoctrinate children. CRT is Marxism, the oppressed and the oppressor. How dare JCPS do this evil to our children? We're not even talking about anti-critical uh, race theory. I think critical race theory is a term that has been loaded up to mean anything about white grievance. That's Cedric Powell, law professor at the University of Louisville. Powell's been teaching about critical race theory for years, long before Christopher Rufo plucked the term from academic obscurity. A note for transparency, Powell is also on the board of directors of Louisville Public Media, which WFPL is a part of. I ask him to explain as succinctly as possible what critical race theory is. What critical race theorists are trying to explore is how uh, inequality is perpetuated through systems and practices and laws that impact people of color. The key piece here is that racism is not just about personal prejudice. It's perpetuated through systems. He gives a few examples, the legacy of slavery or today's restrictive voting laws, like requiring an ID or limiting polling hours and locations. Critical race theory doesn't just apply to the black experience. Laws and legal structures have been created to discriminate against other people based on race, like immigration restrictions. Powell says conservative activists aren't using the term in good faith. Critical race theory isn't even taught in most K-12 schools. It's a graduate level theory. This isn't really about critical race theory. This is about something else. It is about control and who gets to control and who gets included and who gets excluded. So I think the real desperation comes from people seeing that we have a diverse populace now. There's certainly a shift in terms of moving from a white majority to a multicultural majority in the United States. And I think that it makes uh, people nervous. It really does. And so you see that in the type of extremism that we have now. So what are the characteristics of the latest communist effort to conquer the world? Back at the forum, another speaker, Irina Baptiste, is at the front of the room clicking through a PowerPoint presentation. She claims critical race theory is a Marxist pro-LGBTQ plot to take over not just the United States, but the world. She reads a list of words that supposedly signal someone's support for this communist takeover. Social justice, diversity and inclusion, empire, white supremacy, anti-blackness, anti- In many ways, the talk she's giving is like a buffet of conservative themes. The critical race theorists aren't just a threat to the American capitalist way of life, but also to gun rights, to Christianity, and to manhood. At the end, they allow questions. And the first person to speak up is Kumar Rashad. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got uh, one, really one question. Let me, uh, well. You'll remember Rashad is a social studies and math teacher at Breckenridge Metropolitan High School in Louisville. He's worried that legislation which purports to target critical race theory will, in effect, censor teachers from speaking on racism at all. He wants to know the speaker's sources, and he points out some flaws in their explanations of critical race theory. The speakers do not back down. And finally, Rashad stands up. You get the sense he's just had it. I'm judged every day because I'm black. I'm judged because I'm strong. Rashad keeps going, trying to explain redlining, a system that denied and continues to deny loans to would-be black homeowners. Beanie Gohagen, the organizer, asks him to leave, and he does, but not quietly. We're going to ask you to leave. I'm going to leave because y'all are you. Thank you for coming. I reconnect with Rashad a couple months later in his backyard. He's playing fetch with a very energetic terrier. That's Jack Jack. Jack Jack. Yeah. And I ask him what was going through his mind during that forum. He sums it up with just a couple words. This is bullshit. And uh, it was. Rashad says he talked with some of the featured speakers during the event and was confounded by their logic. He says they don't have a real understanding of what critical race theory is or the issues at play. So one thing I was thinking about when I was there is the fact that both of the speakers were people of color. Exactly. Um, That's the worst part. They always want to put uh, black folks against each other. So it wasn't a surprise that they actually used uh, black folks to do that. But 
it doesn't make it less hurtful when you're there. For Rashad, the stakes are high, not just for him, but for his students. Many schools are starting to bolster their curriculums with black and brown perspectives that have historically been left out. Rashad worries this movement on the right could rob kids of the chance to learn a full and accurate picture of American history. Now we're talking about uh, educating black children and giving them what they need in order to succeed, and you want to put a stop on that. The thing is, we've been here before, many times. It is a lot of um, 80-year-old deja vu reading the headlines today. That's Adam Latz, a historian at Binghamton University in New York. He studies the history of conservative activism in American public education. And Latz says what we're seeing in this forum and in communities across the country is an old playbook of the right. It goes back at least to the 1930s, when a white dad named O.K. Armstrong objected to his child's textbook. The textbook was published by Harold Rugg. He had a whole series. And the Rugg books were pretty progressive, but they weren't controversial. In fact, they were really popular, sold in the millions, until Armstrong had a look at what his kid was reading in history class. And he was outraged by the um, anti-American, pro, in that, in that era, pro-Soviet. They didn't say anti-white, but they certainly meant it. One book, for example, asked students to consider if the United States really was a land of opportunity for everyone. Rugg's opponents claimed the question was communist propaganda. Armstrong's concerns with the Rugg textbooks got picked up by conservatives nationally. Conservative parents came to school board meetings across the country to demand the books be banned. In some towns, they even burned piles of them. Just like CRT opponents today have lists of words they take issue with, anti-rug activists circulated their own lists. The phrase they used was weasel words. Um, You know, words that if you just looked at them, you'd say, okay, that's just about American society. But once you understand the lens that, that they were, these conservative activists were reading, they were secret signs to subvert the patriotism Um, and the pro-American ardor of American youth. The conservative activists succeeded. Schools started pulling the books from classrooms, not always because they agreed with the activists, but because they wanted to avoid the controversy. Latt says these conflicts come up again and again, and at times they've escalated to violence. He says the conflicts often happen when white conservatives are afraid. For example, back in the 40s, Latt says people opposed to the Rugg textbooks were really terrified. With war looming, uh, an active war happening by the 40s, there was a lot of worry that if young people read that America had problems, they would no longer be willing to make the sacrifices necessary to engage in a, you know, a war for the country. World War II, a war that America and its allies eventually won, After the war ended, America still didn't want to talk about its own problems. But the American government did want Germany to talk about theirs. When we come back, we'll go back to Germany and learn how lessons on the Holocaust became a mandatory part of school curriculum. This is A Critical Moment from WFPL News. 